Hello. Welcome. Um, coming to you from my new space. Still feels so fresh and new. It's actually been a, it's been a month. It's been a month. And it just feels so good every time I come in here. I am popping on today. Hi, Justine. I'm popping on today because I wanted to talk ba uh, talk base. I wanted to touch base um, while I'm between clients in regards to books and how they can change your DNA. What? Mind blown. Words, spells, those kinds of things. So the other day, my kidlet and I, he found this book in one of those libraries, those little... Um, in Victoria, we have these little libraries around town that people create, and they've got these doors, and you can give books and take books, and they're in different neighborhoods, and they're amazing, and I absolutely love them. Needless to say, part of my bookshelf. That's why it never really gets empty, because I find all these amazing books. We were at this one downtown, uh, down Dragon Alley, and my kid picks up this book by Ursula Le Guin. Now, if you know Ursula Le Guin, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not quite sure about Ursula Le Guin, you need to read her. She's got some amazing work. She did the Earthsea series, which I have not read, um, but I've read some of her other books, and I can't think of the names off the top of my head. I'll have to get back to you on that one. But when you end the books, you're just like, something feels different in my body. Your brain is thinking a new way. You're acting a different way. Your spirit feels... Like, everything just feels different. But it's not something you can actually fully put your finger on. So my kid grabs this book. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm like, that's going to change your DNA. He's like, what do you mean, mama? <laughs> He's just like, yes, like he wanted the book. He wouldn't put it down. He's like on chapter seven or eight or something like that. And so I had to think about a way I could put it for him. Because so I was like, it just shifts your DNA. It changes, like I just said, how you think and all this other stuff. But how? And that's what I love about him is he doesn't always just accept the easy answer, even though sometimes I wish he would just be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. No. He's not like that at all. So I had to think about it. I had a good talk with Derek, my partner, about how he views it as well. And, and so he came up with the first one, which makes so much sense. So what do we do when we're spelling the word or spelling a word? We are creating a spell. We are creating magic that can influence energies. Think about when you're, bring it into the 21st century, you're sending a text and you read it and you're like, oh, not quite. Try it again. Because text has no tone, but the words on the screen can implicit a tone. Depending on the words, I'm trying to think of two separate words that mean the same thing. Oh, we're going to get there by five o'clock. We will arrive by five o'clock. We will be there by five o'clock. They all hold kind of a different tone to them, a different influence, an energetic vibration, because they're made up of different letters. The thing is with letters, each of them also correspond to numerology. Ah, get that one. So then each word vibrates differently, depending on the total amount that the word equals within the numerological sequence mind blown. So spelling, right? You're creating a spell, you're creating magic. You're creating influence that way. But the other one, the one that I was more referring to when I was telling Zeph about this, this, um, changing your DNA is not that it actually is physically going in and being like, hmm, okay, five steps down. Let's take that piece out and let's insert this green piece. Oh, another seven steps down, let's take, let's take out that yellow piece and insert the purple piece. It's not doing that necessarily. What it's doing is it's activating different portions of our DNA that have been lying dormant. It's reminding us of the ancient knowledge and the ancient wisdom that is within us already, but has been laying dormant. It's kind of in like some medical conditions, if we want to take it to the physical realm, if we want to bring it to the 3D realm, it's like the medical conditions that can lay dormant within your body. It's in your DNA. It's been in your DNA all along. But it's not until it's activated, until it's triggered, until it's turned on, that it may manifest itself. And there can be different things that trigger that. Maybe it's a lifestyle. 
Um, there's quite a few things coming up now around like schizophrenia and, and cannabis was one of the research things. I know that one for some people doesn't stick, but there was some research behind certain things and how different you can turn on what is already in your DNA that has been shut down. So there's certain ways, and this is kind of the idea behind some of the DNA testing that you can get now, is that you can say, oh, I have that within my DNA. I'm going to avoid smoking, drinking, these kinds of foods, these kinds of activities, or take these precautions to make sure or to help or to influence whether or not those portions get activated. Crazy. So think of that in the same way. So these spells, these magical words by these people, and these people are powerful. So Ursula Le Guin is the one that we're talking about here, but she has this way of spinning words so that it affects your DNA. It goes in. Another one that I've been finding has been creating crazy, crazy influence upon myself and new things just coming up. And it's not, and it's not all in your head. You actually feel it all the way down. You're like, no, no, I feel like I'm shifting. I feel like I'm looking different. I feel like my body structure, like you actually feel it, is the Mikyu Sankey Antakarana um, Esoteric Acupuncture Volume 7 book. The more and more I read it, the more I'm like, oh, that is the ancient knowledge within me. Because within my DNA, that is held. But we all have an ancient heritage and a lineage. We all start from something small, from stardust, right? Stardust all has a piece within it that is the same, that is shared amongst us. That small portion or bigger in some people that can be triggered by these words. But what about the words from back in the ancient times? Back in, I just read this one, a good book. Don't know, it doesn't change DNA, but a good book is called Labyrinth by Kate Moss, M O S S E. Kind of disappointed about the ending, but couldn't put it down the rest of the time. It's really good. Um, totally lost my train of thought because I took that train of thought into that realm. Okay, there we go. So ancient times, like the Crusades or during the witch burnings and all that other stuff, right? They had different words that they used than the words that we use now. But they're the same messages. They're just flipped on their head and made palatable to our generation, made palatable to this 3D manifestation form in the now. So it'll change again. Those words will change again. The messages and the underlying meanings will be the same. Another one is, for example, initiation. Another one is spiritual awakening by sounding out Roman. Can you think of any others off the top of my head right now? It's actually the whole series. Oh, another one, Anastasia. So the Ringing Cedar series. Vladimir, I think something. I can't remember his last name right, right now. But these are books that you read them and you're like, something is different within me now. You can't see the world the same way. And it's not like you're cognizant, like I said, of it. You're not looking at the world and going, oh yeah, yeah, I see that and that doesn't make sense. But it's more like your vision is opened up and you're actually taking more in and you're seeing more behind the veils. So yes, so this is what I said to my child about how his DNA is being activated. His DNA is changing in the sense of Let's say this is a level of the DNA. It's closed and all of a sudden it's changing because this one is now open. I'd love to know what books have been influential for you and have they been influential on the conscious level or on that subconscious level where you're like, that shifted me, but I'm not sure exactly how. Often these are books that we are we often think about for a long time or they've come into our life. I have one book called You Are Psychic not a fan of the title, but the book is awesome. And um, it sat with me for almost 15 years. And then I read it and I was like, oh, got it. It was meant for me, just not at the time when I first got it. I was not ready for it. So they may come upon you early or you'll see a book one, two, three, four, five times until you finally pick it up or twice before you finally pick it up. Or you're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that book. Or three people all of a sudden will talk to you about the book and you're like, what is going on? You need to read that book. There's something in it that your vibration within your DNA is aching for to awaken. Okay, it's a quick one today. So much love and stardust. Have yourself a most excellent weekend.